Hello students, I am Rahul Sharad Joshi, Assistant Professor at the Bhopal School of Social Sciences. I would be taking lectures on financial management and the topic I have chosen for today is leverages. Now, while studying leverages, the very first question that comes to our mind is, what do we mean by the word leverage? Leverage is a relationship between two variables. But the most important thing is those two variables needs to be interrelated. Unless and until the variables are interrelated, we cannot come to a right conclusion. Then how do we define leverages? Leverages is nothing but percentage change in dependent variable divided by the percentage change in independent variable. After going through the meaning of leverages, now let's see how many types of leverages are there. The first one is operating leverage. Now, operating leverage studies the relationship between sales and EBIT. Next one is financial leverage. Financial leverage studies the relationship between EBIT and EPS. And the third one is the combined leverage. When we talk about combined leverage, combined leverage is not a distinct type of a leverage. Basically, it's a product of operating leverage and financial leverage. Now, before we go into technicalities of leverages, Let's study two different risks. The first one is the business risk. Now, business risk is the variability of EBIT. It results because of internal and external environment. And the very important thing is, it is an unavoidable risk. A business risk cannot be avoided. Next is, it is associated with capital budgeting decisions. It does not vary with the financing patterns. and it is measured by calculating operating leverage. So, business risk is calculated by operating leverage. Next, we have financial risk. Financial risk is the variability of earning before tax. It comes into picture because of the sources bearing fixed financial payments like debentures. It is an avoidable risk. This risk can be avoided. Next thing is it its degree differs with the use of different forms and it is measured by calculating financial leverage. So, we can sum it up that business risk is calculated by operating leverage, financial risk is measured by financial leverage. Next, we have the functional relationship of operating leverage. See, we start with sales, then we deduct variable cost, result is contribution, from contribution we deduct fixed cost and then we arrive at EBIT. So, in the first slide, we have seen that leverage is percentage change in dependent variable divided by the percentage change in independent variable. So, this is a functional relationship in case of operating leverage. In the operating leverage, we can see that sales revenue is an independent variable, whereas EBIT is a dependent variable. Now, we come to what do you mean by operating leverage. Operating leverage studies the relationship between the sales and EBIT. It measures the effect of change in sales on the level of EBIT. So, how do we calculate operating leverage? Operating leverage is percentage change in EBIT divided by the percentage change in sales revenue. Now, let's start with the example of operating leverage. ABC Limited sells 1000 units at rupees 10 per unit. The variable cost is 7 per unit and whole of the cost is variable in nature. And suppose the firm is able to increase sales level by 40% resulting into sales of 1400 units. Now, we need to calculate the operating leverage. So, let's start. Sales is at the rate of rupees 10 per unit. So, sales comes to rupees 10,000. Whole of the cost is variable in nature. The variable cost comes to 7,000. That is 1,000 multiplied by 7. When we deduct variable cost from sales, we arrive at contribution that is 3,000. And because there is no fixed cost component, whatever is your contribution that becomes your EBIT. So, my EBIT at present level of sales is rupees 3000. Now, sales increases to 1400 units. So, new sales comes to 14,000. Then 1400 multiplied by 7 gives you a 9800 of variable cost. When we deduct variable cost from sales, we arrive at contribution of 4200. And because there is no fixed cost, even 4200 becomes your EBIT. Now, we need to calculate operating leverage. Now, how do I define operating leverage? Operating leverage is percentage change in dependent variable divided by the percentage change in independent variable. In the last class, we have seen that in case of operating leverage, your sales is an independent variable, whereas your EBIT is a dependent variable. 
So now we need to calculate the percentage change. In case of sales, we will saying sales is increasing from 10,000 to 14,000. It means there is an increase of 4,000. 4,000 multiplied by 10,000 multiplied by 100 that gives you an increase of 40 percent. Sales is increasing by 40 percent. In the same case, if we see the percentage change in EBIT, EBIT is increasing from 3000 to 4200. That is an increase of rupees 1200. So, in case of EBIT, the percentage of change would be 1200 divided by 3000 multiplied by 100. This gives you even 40 percent. So, what we are seeing is even sales is increasing by 40 percent and even the EBIT is increasing by 40 percent. So, what is the operating leverage? 40 percent divided by 40 percent that gives you an operating leverage of 1. Now, the next question is what does that operating leverage of 1 denotes? The operating leverage of 1 denotes that the EBIT level increases or decreases in direct proportion to sales. EBIT level increases or decreases in direct proportional to sales. If sales has increased by 40 percent, even the EBIT has increased by 40 percent. Now the big question is why does this happen? Because there is no fixed cost element in the cost structure. So first rule we can make it whenever there is no fixed cost in the cost structure, the operating leverage will always be 1. Now let's take fixed cost and then see what happens. So in the next example we see now there is a fixed cost of rupees 1000. Now let's see what happens to operating leverage when there is fixed cost in the cost structure. Sales remains 10,000 in the present case, variable cost is 7,000, your contribution comes to 3,000. Now we have taken a fixed cost of 1000 and in that case your EBIT comes to 2000. Now in the expected case sales is 14,000 then variable cost is 9,800. Your contribution comes to 4200, fixed cost remains fixed 1000 and your EBIT comes to 3200. Now let's calculate operating leverage in this case. Sales remains the same, the percentage remains the same 40 percent as we have calculated in the first case. Now let's see the percentage change in EBIT. EBIT is increasing from 2000 to 3200 that is an increase of 1200 divided by 2000 multiplied by 100 that gives you an increase of 60 percent. So now when we calculate operating leverage that is percentage change in dependent variable divided by the percentage change in independent variable. So 60 percent is the change in dependent variable that is EBIT divided by the percentage change in independent variable that is sales. So 60 percent divided by 40 percent so operating leverage comes to 1.5. Now, the next thing is what do you mean by this operating leverage of 1.5? 1.5 in simple terms means if sales increases by 1 percent, your EBIT will increase by 1.5 percent. If sales increases by 1 percent, EBIT will increase by 1.5 percent. That means whenever there is fixed cost in your cost structure, there will be more than proportionate increase or decrease in the level of EBIT. Then we have certain thumb rules. The operating leverage will always be greater than 1 for any firm which has a fixed cost element and if there is no fixed cost in the cost structure, operating leverage will always be 1. Now there is another formula for calculating operating leverage and that formula is contribution divided by EBIT. Now this formula is static in nature. Then it calculates the effect on EBIT for a change at a given level of sales. It means that for different level of sales, it will give you different operating leverages. Let's see. When we have taken sales of rupees 10,000, variable cost of 7,000, we arrive at contribution of 3,000, then fixed cost 1,000, EBIT 2,000. In that case, if we go by the formula contribution divided by EBIT, your operating leverage comes to 1.5. In the same way, if we go to the sales level of 14,000, in that case, you will see that your operating leverage comes to 1.31. Now, after discussing operating leverages till now, one more point remains that what happens if the firm is operating at a break even. Now, what do we mean by the word break even? When contribution is just equal to fixed cost and your EBIT is 0. In such a case, when firm is operating at a break even level, operating leverage cannot be defined. Let's see with an example. Sales is rupees 10,000, 
variable cost is 7000 contribution comes to 3000 and in case if and if your fixed cost is 3000 then what happens your EBIT is zero in such a case when EBIT is zero operating leverage cannot be defined now after studying operating leverage what all conclusions can be drawn let's see the first one is operating leverage is the percentage change in EBIT as a result of one percent change in sales the second one is operating leverage arises because of fixed cost in the cost structure. Now the third one is higher the fixed cost greater would be the operating leverage and next a positive operating leverage means that firm is operating at a level which is higher than the break even level and the last one says a negative operating leverage means that firm is operating at a level which is lower than the break even level. So students this is all about the operating leverage. In the next class, we will be talking about financial leverage. Thank you.